I'm just gonna go on. This, this video should have been why I love EF lenses. All right, this video is gonna be a one year review for me. I'm shooting professionally with the Canon R5, as well as we're also going to be giving away that Fuji film. So we're gonna be doing the drawing for that later at the end of the video, so stick around for that. Okay, so I wanted to make a quick video just on, I've had the R5, um, the Canon R5 for exactly one year to the day. Um, and over that time I've shot um, a lot, a lot of portraits with it. Um, I do shoot um, professionally as a portrait photographer. Um, I have seen just a ton of, I've, I've watched a ton of videos and I'm sure you probably have too if you're watching this on the R5. And a majority of the stuff is focused on the video. And while I think all of that is amazing, um, uh, first and foremost, I, I use this for, for portraits. So let's just get right to the point. Um, the pros for this camera that I have, um, the autofocus, um, the autofocus system is, is really, really amazing. Um, I, I use this camera in point. Um, I use the, the, the selection. So I have a focus point that I move around and then I have a button programmed for the eye autofocus. So this allows me to really quickly switch between the two. So if my subject isn't necessarily looking directly at me, um, I can still put that focus where I want. And one of the biggest things with my, um, I used to shoot with the Canon 5D Mark IV, which I still have and still love. But the biggest thing was um, focus issues. Um, it would just be off a little, especially if you were shooting um, with certain primes, like really wide open or F2 or, or wider. Um, it was really a little bit hit or miss. Now with the R5, that's pretty much in the past. Um, the autofocus system is really amazing. So that's definitely a pro. It's made my job as a portrait photographer much easier. The dials and controls is the next thing I have. This is a very comfortable camera to use and it makes it very enjoyable. There's a lot to be said about if you pick up a camera, go and shoot with it and have fun. Um, I did use some other mirrorless cameras and it could have been me just not knowing the system, but I fumbled around and the cameras were amazing. But the fact that I could not get comfortable shooting with them in you know, a certain amount of time made me just not comfortable enough to continue shooting with them. So I am a long time Canon shooter. So that is a little, you know, there's probably a little bit of bias there for sure. But this camera is very easy and very comfortable. Um, if anything, I would say it's still a little too small for me, um, but I do love the fact that it's small as well. So it's a, that's a pro con for sure. But the dials are where I want them. Everything is perfect. So that has made um, shooting much more enjoyable. So that's, that's definitely a pro for the camera. Um, the file sizes. So this is a pro and a con as well. The file sizes, I think, I don't even know. I don't, I'm not a real technical um, spec kind of guy, but I think they're 45 megapixel. Um, so the resolution is really, really good. Um, the con to this is there's really no option to shoot a lower uh, megapixel full raw. I believe there's some option to shoot a uh, more compressed uh, 45 megapixel file, but I don't want that. I want the full quality and like, again, uh, referencing the 5D series, um, you know, you could shoot at like 30 megapixels, you could shoot at like 17 megapixels. It would just be a really nice option to have and it's not available in the R5. And I just, you know, when things, I, I think things should not go backwards. I think they should like keep going forwards. They shouldn't take those features out of the camera. The next thing is something that really um, struck me as interesting. <laughs> I put a pro as the EF lenses because how do I say this? When I bought this, I bought it with uh, the 50 millimeter 1.2 RF lens. And this lens is amazing and it's huge as you can see, and it's heavy. So I had the one RF lens and then one of my eight, my favorite, favorite lenses to use is the 35 1.4 L. Um, that's what's on here right now with the uh, adapter. Now, 
I also would have the 85 1.2. Those were the three lenses that I primarily shot with. So when I was shooting, I had one, one adapter, the RF 50, 35 and the 85. So again, a lot of when I'm shooting, what, what really matters to me is how, how the flow is, how comfortable I am, how comfortable my subject is with me. That means like a lot, lot more than, than any um, technical thing I can put on a sheet. And it happened to me too with, with the other mirrorless system that I was using, because I was using adapters, that if I'm going from an RF to this and I'm fumbling with an adapter, it just made, made the shooting experience less enjoyable. So, my options were, okay, well, I could buy another 85 one point, or I could buy the RF 1.2, like that, that lens looks amazing and I definitely do want to get that. But in the short term, I definitely wanted the 35. So I was like, okay, I'll put the adapter on the 35, shoot with the this 50, and then buy another adapter for my 85 for now and, and see how I like it. And then I got to thinking, well, I'll just, why don't I just put that money from the adapter towards the 85? Well, in the meantime, I basically went, well, you know what? The 50 um, EF 1.2 has always been one of my favorite lenses. So I was going to buy the 85 1.2 and then I switched one day. I, I went on a shoot and I shot with the 50 1.2 and just left the adapter on. So it was all adapted EF lenses and it was amazing. Like that EF 50 1.2 is a great, great lens. I don't know if it's as sharp as this. In fact, I know it's not as sharp as this, especially at 1.2, but I don't shoot a ton at 1.2. And I guess long story short, too late, the EF lenses have worked just amazing on this camera for me. And this 50 millimeter 1.2 RF has literally sat on my shelf all year. I, I don't, I, I, when I do use it, I'm like, wow. But for portraits, these EF lenses, they're just, they're really, really good. They're, they've always been great lenses. So I think it's a huge, huge plus, especially the fact that we cannot buy third-party lenses at this point. I can't get a Sigma lens. I can't get a Tamron lens uh, for this. The fact that I have all this plethora of like old EF glass, which I've already had, I've had 90% of the, the L series glass, or at least 80%, I don't have a lot of the big telephoto ones. Um, it, it's allowed me to really like appreciate them. On top of that, as you know, I'm a big, big film photographer. So this is the EOS 1V. Just, this is an amazing beast of a camera in itself. Um, all, my, our, our, all my EF lenses clearly can be used on that camera. Like amazing, amazing. So it's really cool to have the system to where I can use them on both. Um, and one of the things that really, really came up is that so right from the start, having, you know, I have the, the EOS 1V, I have an EOS 3. I never ever intended to sell my EF lenses anyway. So I know a lot of people, you know, and rightfully so, they would, you know, to invest in the New York glass, they would sell their EF lenses. I never was going to do that just because I love shooting film and I love this um, EOS 1V for sure. So what happened was, like I said, I didn't, I didn't, I'm not full in on the RF glass yet. I know I will be. I know I will be eventually. I will I will invest in the RF glass. I just haven't needed to at this point and I've been loving loving the images I've been getting with the EF. In fact, I've now purchased um In fact, I've now purchased this is the 135 EF um F2 and this is the 24 mm 1.4. Those are the two lenses that I've always wanted and never quite pulled the trigger on. So a definite bonus to the R and the RF glass is the prices on these lenses came down a bit and I, I picked them up and I tell you this 135 F2 is amazing. It is hands down probably my favorite lens at the moment, mostly because it's newer, um, but I stopped I stopped using my 85 and I've been shooting a lot more with that and it, it, it replaces my 70 to 200 in a lot of places. Um, so I really love the 135 and the 35 and the 50. That's my rant about EF glass. One side note. I don't know if it just it's just going to take me time, but once I do get more RF glass, this lens cap on the back, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. 
it's, I don't know, it's more difficult to put on than the EF. And I know it sounds stupid, but it is. It, when I, whenever I would use this, I'm like, the, the EF ones, it's just, you, you just pop them on, they pop on this one. You have to have it lined up exactly. And when you're, I change lenses a lot when I'm in a hurry, it seemed more difficult to me. I don't know why they have to change the way things work. I don't like change. But anyway, that's my last gripe about the, the, the lenses. So let's see what else I got here. Okay, a couple more things about the lenses. So the RF lenses are quite a bit bigger as well. So the EF lenses tend to be just smaller and lighter overall, which I like, especially on this smaller body. Um, so that's one thing that you would definitely, you know, um, that, that I definitely consider. I mean, if you look at, so this is the 51.2 EF and this is, I'll even take the lens hood off here. I mean, that, that's a big difference in a camera bag and it's quite a bit heavier. Um, again, the RF glass is, it, it's, it's, it's flipping insane sharp. Like it's, it's almost too sharp for portraits. So on the, so those are the things that I really love about this camera, mostly the ergonomics, the feel of it, like how well it shoots, um, the files coming off of it. They, they do look amazing. They have more dynamic range on, on a short note on that. Um, Lightroom just did recently um, put support in for the, the raw profiles, but I still find that if you put these files into Capture One, they look way better. So uh, I wish Lightroom could do a better job on that just because my whole workflow is through Lightroom. And then just a couple cons, uh, the battery life, it to me, it kind of sucks. Um, like I find myself having to change batteries like during a shoot um, every so often. Um, with the 5D Mark IV, I never had to. So I fully realize it's the same battery and this is much more of a, you know, it's much more computerized. So that makes sense. But again, I just don't like to see things going backwards. If, I, if I'm used to battery life being so long, I don't want to get less battery life from a camera that's newer and, you know, more expensive and more technologically advanced. I would like to see them figure out a way to do better. When shooting with off camera flash, um, the triggers on this. So when you have a trigger on here, it automatically um, brightens the, um, the display to give you what it thinks is uh, accurate exposure. Now I do have a, a button program to where it will bring it back down, but as soon as you bump any other buttons, it brightens it back up. So it's kind of frustrating that, that they don't just have an override for that but they don't. Um, so whenever you put a trigger or a flash on, it automatically kind of messes you up in the exposure side of things. I know Sony's did the same thing, but I, I think they had a better way of overriding it than Canon does. Um, so, but again, I, I have this button programmed so that when the trigger's on and everything's bright, if I hit this button, it will give me the actual exposure that just the camera without the flash would take but then as soon as I hit anything else, it brightens it back up. So, I mean, then I can, I can turn the, sometimes I just turn the trigger off, get my ambient exposure, then turn it back on. Um, it hasn't been a huge deal, but it's just kind of something that I think is kind of stupid. Usually most photographers today are doing off camera flash. Um, even if you're doing on camera flash, I don't think it's an accurate representation of what the picture is gonna look like just because it just brightens everything up completely. So I, I just think it's kind of a dumb, dumb way to, to deal with it, but that's, that's what they do. Then real quick, I'll just get into some um, things with the video. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time, but for my purposes, and now I am not a videographer by any means. I mean, making these YouTube videos is a struggle every single time. I'm striving to be better. So when I go out with the R5 and just shoot video, be it 4K 120, I've never really shot in the 8K, but 4K 120, um, 60, it's never been an issue for me with overheating. Um, I usually am taking smaller clips. I have run into it where I'm shooting 4K like long form and it's uh, overheated a couple times. 
but just me going out and like shooting, like it's never really been a problem. What has been a problem and what is a bigger issue for me in that regards, because I am a portrait photography shooter, but I also would love the ability to be able to take some nice um, slow motion video of my subjects while shooting photos. I kind of shoot, you know, I kind of have a, a heavy hand on, on the trigger. So the camera heats up while I'm shooting. And then if I want to go take video, I can't take 4K 120, I can't take 4K 60. That is a much bigger problem for me than me just going out and shooting a little bit of video footage. Cause like I said, that's never been a problem. Like I, I don't think it's ever really overheated when I'm just out, you know, trying to get some like B-roll footage or, or short clips and 4K 120 and 60, even 4K, um, uh, you know, 24 frames. It's never really been a problem, but I do know uh, specifically I wanted to, to make a kind of behind the scenes video when I was shooting out in Las Vegas. And it was the first time I really got to use the camera on a, on a big shoot. And I could not shoot in 4K um, on the shoot while I was shooting stills. Now it was 90 degrees. Um, so I don't know being, I think it's only like 45 degrees out here today, but how realistic am I gonna, you know, I don't, go and shoot as much when it's 45 degrees. So it's more realistic that it's gonna be 70 to 90 degrees and I'm gonna need this camera to be able to switch from stills to video and it cannot do that for me. Um, you can shoot in like 1080, but you know, like the, the whole reason to have this camera, I think is to, in my opinion, would be to shoot the 4K 120 or the 4K 60 and make something really beautiful and, and flowy. Um, and all that being said, I think the the video quality of this camera is so amazing that I can't knock it for any of the video aspects. I do wish it could be more of a hybrid shooter for me, for sure. But I have a lot more to learn about storytelling and about um, actual like just setting up shots and, and so much more. I personally have to learn about making or doing video work than worrying about any technical aspect of my camera because i mean let's face it let's see some of this you look at some of the stuff coming off of people that know what they're doing with like iphones and you know what i mean so it's much less about the quality than it is about for me about learning how to narrate and tell story and and do all these things and get feeling across with video so I'm gonna focus my attention on that. And, um, you know, they're also supposed to be releasing the the 5RC. So that would intrigue me a lot, uh, mostly for the hybrid, you know, to be able to shoot stills and then switch over to video. But I'm not gonna go on about that. One last thing about video on this camera, and it goes back to the EF lenses. this thing right here and man man did it take me a long time to get this thing and look at all the dust on that lovely this little thing is cool it is a variable nd filter uh rf to ef mount so it did take me about nine months to actually get it um Still don't know what I'm doing when I use it. I'm just kidding, I kind of do. Um, you know, it can help you keep your, it's just like a, a, a filter on the front of your lens, only this goes in between. I was hoping it would still have the control ring and it doesn't, but I'm very excited to do some, um, not only video work with this, which I have done a bit with and it works really, really slick, but I'm going to also be doing some off camera flash um, to keep the, um, sync speed of my shutter underneath 200th of a second um, to get some more power out of my lights. So I'm gonna be doing that as well. So that's really why I was intrigued by this. I think it was a little bit more about the off-camera flash options, but it's really cool because I can put this on and then if I'm, I'm videoing, I don't have to worry about over the, the, again, I hate fuddling with stuff. So if I wanna use a couple different lenses while I'm filming, I just leave this on and, and can switch to the EF lenses. Um, plus I think the EF lenses have a really good look for video and I'm just going to go on this, this video should have been why, why I love EF lenses. So like I said before, I never plan on selling my EOS 1V. Therefore I never plan on selling my, um, EF glass. 
And along with that, I'm actually recording this on my 5D Mark IV, which in itself is a pain in the butt, by the way. But the um, I don't intend to sell that camera either. Um, and it's, it's a little bit because it's the last of the DSLRs that Canon's gonna be making, um, at least the, well, the 1DX uh, Mark III would be, but this is kind of the end of an era with the 5D Mark IV. And I was shooting with it the other day and it's a super fun camera to shoot with. I still love it. It's, it's, a, it's just a brick of an amazing camera. It's built so good and it, the, the files coming off it are so pretty that I don't think it's gonna be a camera that I sell. Um, you know, much like, much like the, um, you know, the Canon F1, the Canon A1 and the FD glass, you know, that's kind of an era and I want to have these lenses and th these cameras um, from the, the film and the first digital DSLR era um, as we go into the future. I want to have them. So that's that's that. Yeah, and if you look at the price of some of this um, FD glass now, it's going up and up. So I do feel like the EF, you know, being that it's a little bit older, has a little bit more character. It's not quite as technical as the RF but I haven't shot with a ton of RF glass either. So anyway, end of rant. I love the ND filter, love the camera. It is, it's the best camera I have used for um, portrait photography, hands down. The autofocus system is probably the, the driving force that made me purchase it. I don't think I would have if um, that technology was available in the, the five, you know, in a di digital SLR, if I could get the same focusing, you know, sharpness across the board. I would rather shoot with a, a digital SLR personally, um, but I can't. Um, anything else about this camera other than mine is really dirty. So yeah, I would I would recommend it to anybody that is is looking to up their their portrait photography game. It's just it's a great camera. You know the all the accessories, the lenses. You know moving forward, I think Canon's got a good grip on what they're doing as they always have. And this camera is pretty close to perfect other than a few, you know, things that I mentioned. It's it's been a joy to shoot with and yeah, I love it. So now it's time to pick the winner of the Fuji 400H film giveaway um, along with the two mystery rolls of film. So let me just dig in here. All right, so it looks like we had 40 participants um, 225 entries, so thank you for everybody who participated. And I'm just going to go to uh, choose winners. Make a selection. Okay, randomize winners. I never know how to do this. Okay, I'm gonna randomly select one winner. Yes. Well, let's see what happens. Michael Lloyd, you have won the Fuji 400H film and the two mystery rolls, um, congratulations. I will send you an email um, and get that shipped out to you right away. So thanks again for everybody that participated. And yeah, hopefully I can do some other cool giveaways in the future. I'm really grateful to have 2000 and some subscribers to this YouTube channel, and I'm gonna continue to try and make uh, great content for y'all. Now, I wish they could make the R5 sound like the EOS 1B. That would be, that would be a treat.